Hi, dude. Hi, Scott Campbell. You made it up the stairs. Do you want to work on our adventure game? Just standing and you I'm stand like, a bit on there, you close your eyes and you lean and we hey, pass the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, man. Do you know Brandon? Brandon. No, we have another one. Oh, Brandon. Brandon. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is so awkward. It was nice to see you. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. That's all we do around here. Hey, buddy. Hugs up here. Really? Hello, hello everybody. Hi, thanks for coming. Uh, please join me in welcoming some special guests we have here today. We have from out of, some out-of-towners. We have Mr. Peter Chan over here. Peter Chan. Hello. Uh, we have Mr. Scott Campbell. Where's Scott Campbell? Yeah. There's Scott Campbell. Hey, Scott Campbell. And we have uh, Nathan Bagel Stapley. There he is. Anyone else coming in from out of town? Um, we are doing um, uh, an art jam for Reds. Reds is the code name for our Double Fine Adventure. This last week we did one of my favorite things, which was the art jam, which got all our artists from across the country here in this room, sitting around one table, just drawing and talking and, and pitching ideas back and forth. And we had Peter Chan, and, who has been working with me since Smoky Island too. We had Scott Campbell, who's um, here since the beginning of Double Fine. And um, Nathan Bagel Stapley, who, um, whose art is going to be featured front and center in the uh, Double Fine adventure, and who has also been here since the beginning of uh, from Double Fine. It's good to see you guys. I haven't seen you know a lot of you in the office for a while, so it's awesome to have you here. Um, people who don't know who these guys are, um, ask somebody. <laughs> I know. I'm excited. It's like a total reunion. The last time we were all together was um, beginning of Brutal Legend. Peter was, Peter's been on, I think, every one of his projects. <laughs> here that uh, hired me, right here. I hired more people in this industry than you know. <laughs> Tim and everyone was going, we would like you to come back and help us out on this. And that was the friendliest uh, you've seen Ron right there, fellas. To collaborate with uh, these guys, Ron and, and Tim again is, you know, it's like the good old days, you know, so I didn't want to pass that up. Art is obviously really critical to graphic adventures. It's part of the defining thing of like, let's have an adventure game, but let's add not just text to it. Let's actually show the world. And seeing beautiful worlds laid out in front of you to inspire your imagination, your desire to explore them is, is such an important thing because they don't have, um, you know, an RPG's uh, progression drive, you know, or an ad addictive hook like collectibles or something like that usually. It's just the, the thing that pulls you forward and keeps you going is the, the, the extent to which we've ignited your desire to explore. So I was going to go over the state of the game, like story-wise, and what design there is on the game, and then talk about the art cam, too, a little bit. Because this, this is a little earlier than I think we did. Like, the, when Peter, by the time Peter visited on Brutal, we already had a bunch of art that we then kind of bundled up and made the factions and stuff like that. And this is, I think, a little earlier in the process. I was hoping, to, I put, asked Greg to kind of get you guys here as soon as possible to help generate ideas while I'm designing the game. So because um, 
the game could go so many different areas. I had this idea about the boy and the girl, but you know, there's a spaceship, but there could be anything on the spaceship, and there's this pastoral world, but it could be any level of, it could have anything in it right now. And I think a lot of these, I think coming up with just visual ideas for cool places to go are just a valid place to start as anything. This one is, we're at such an early state on uh, Reds that, um, you know, Tim, Tim's only really identified a few very specific things for us. Right now, the green cards are characters. These are the characters so far. And the yellow cards are just story points. Um, I'm going to be adding locations here and um, puzzles in different colors. I mean, I told them a lot about what we have. That's, that's really as far as the game has gotten because um, I've been doing a lot of business stuff, which is annoying. Um, yeah, so I'm way behind the design and, and the shit. puzzles. But we did hire a business guy. So that's good. And that'll means I won't have to work on housing anymore. But luckily, we just hired a business guy to come in and take care of that stuff. Yeah. Trying to get Brad's new project signed, and uh, a lot of meetings at E3 and stuff. Um, you know, there's there's a few more details that only make sense to me. But uh, um, I mostly gave those guys the heads up about where where everything is right now. Yeah. Uh, it's a story about a boy and a girl, and they both have two different parallel stories going on, and the player can jump back and forth between them. Um, and the girl is. Um, a young girl who's been chosen for this big honor that she finds out is actually being sacrificed to a horrible monster in order to save her town. And, and her story is about choosing to break out of that arrangement and endanger her town and hopefully fight the monster and save her, save her town. And then the boy is a, um, is, has grown up alone on a spaceship, a giant kind of organic spaceship that takes care of his every needs and creates entertainment for him and takes care of his food and his health and everything, but he's all by himself out in space. And it's about him actually finding out um, how to take control of that ship and get access to new secret areas and find out that he has uh, the ability to actually uh, have a higher purpose than just hanging out in a ship being entertained, but he can actually go on rescue missions and save helpless creatures around the galaxy. Like all the other adventure games, I think he had more uh, of landmarks already established uh, more tent poles, right? And um, and then my job was to connect between them. Um, and this time around, yeah, there's less tent poles, and and so it's our job to go in and try to figure out what the other places are right now. Basically, all we're doing is giving him enough uh, of uh, inspiration for him to run with it. Once he sees an image and his imagination starts, you know. Uh, walking around and in our, in our drawings, he can then start to expand on that. That's how it always works with Tim. On a creative direction standpoint, you know, Tim, I, th I think Tim fishes a lot, you know, yeah. and um, he, kind of, he kind of gets these elements and then he makes unusual but cohesive connections between those elements, yeah. you know, and I think that this will help that process for him. Other people maybe have, have in mind a very specific mythology. And I, and I think Tim's different in different games. Like I think Brutal Legend, you know, you know, he had a very, like it's a roadie in this heavy metal fantasy world and it's based on the look of album covers and Frazetta, you know, that was some of the very early stuff. Yeah. A, little more, a little more specific than, than some of this. But I think in the, in the end, he just takes different ways to get there depending on what he feels the game needs or what the theme of the game is really about. But um, it's still in the phase where it just like, Everything is like, yes, and that could be cool, and this could be cool, and this could be cool, and just like, coming up with tons of art. That's my goal. All right. There's these big gaps in the first two acts past the intro, and that's where I think we can help him the most. It is, I'm joking, but it is like a dream team. I mean, these are the best artists I know and they're all tiered together. Oh, man, these are a little dry, dude. Copic, these are Japanese marks, and they're the best now, because the first thing I've got square shapes, they don't roll on your table. Right? And they got a nice, nice medium-sized tip, and a nice chisel tip on the other side. And they, uh, they really can lay it down, so all you do to the refill it is you just pull this sucker off, like that. And you can buy just uh, tip replacements, too, so. Yeah. It's like a weird, like a weird root.
Yeah, like a steak, it's like a meat, it's like a bacon steak root. One day. Uh, yam. Who else? So she starts exploring. When she reaches like pathways which are made of twigs, right? so there are some paths. Once she's on it, she won't sink anymore. So you, that that automatically guides her through. Textural. Now, awesome. When he wasn't looking or when they needed to operate the ship, they sort of like <laughs> fold back and they have all these like um, like AM clock radio innards and little arms come out and they start doing stuff and he turns around and like back as a little bunny. So like these people would be cruising around on like combs and brushes dude and they'd be combing the land like farming. So it'd be like farming style but they'd be farming the trees and shit. I'd be pulling out mice no, too. It'd just be really pretty. pretty. That's the thing, they could be farming and harvesting mm -hmm. all the bugs and shit and then they could put it in their little harvester. <laughs> but also making really cool shapes from the stuff that's that they nice. create, like that. You know what I mean? Oh, oh. So that's cool. what we got. Yeah, I think we're getting closer to. I think we're just trying to figure out like a language because since these things are going to be two D paintings, I think we really just have to figure out the language of both worlds. And I think we're like getting. I think all these drawings. Once we put them all up tomorrow and see what Tim says, it'll even be just that next level of direction. But he just gets worried when you throw away your drawings. Yeah, I don't know anyway, if you saw that today, but yeah. we had some some run-ins with some of the artists throwing away their work because they don't think it's good enough. Don't let me bother you. I'm just looking what? at what you're drawing. It's oh. pretty. Where'd that squid go? Squid? Yeah. You were painting a squid earlier. Oh, yeah. I threw it out. You threw it, threw it out? Oh, <laughs> what? what? Dude, we all liked it. Why'd you throw that away? Son dude? of a monkey. Oh, Which yeah. one? Like, Get a whole sheet of it. Oh, my God. You tore it a half. Uh, I can make another one. Dude, you can't do that. <laughs> that whole make another one. Do dude, that. that whole fucking beach. Foul. You guys liked it? Foul. Yeah, we paid oh, for that. We paid for that. that. <laughs> you pretty much just stole from the backers by tearing that up. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> that whole, why'd you rip that up? You crazy, dude? I uh, know. That was the best shit, man. I'm a Rannick now. Uh, I didn't so think it was that great. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he picked it out of the trash, my drawing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told me to do it over again. <laughs> I'll probably Frankenstein that one, and that'll be the, oh, the biggest of idea. Oh. <laughs> you guys talking about something? This is cool. Weird porcupine guys. It's like moving. Um, it's awesome. I have a lot of faith in Tim, and all we have to do is plant a few seeds, and he'll start running with it. Right? Yeah, planting seeds. Yeah, you don't know what seeds will turn into rad stuff, man. Just a list of possible room ideas and experiences, you know. Um, just, just kind of like some of them are just words. Maybe make us think about some interesting things, you know. Like wild jungle, it's fun for people. A sunny beach, candy room, garden zone, for like the tender side of voice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe those seeds will grow into amazing things, and then we'll realize that those amazing things are actually terrible. So we'll just cover them up with a sheet and then move on to the next thing. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> you know, fireball, soccer. Playing with fireballs is really fun probably for boys. Laser zone. Anything can be made of lasers. So you can eat sandwiches of lasers. You could just shoot them, ride them, dodge them. You know. I'll just do drawings and try to get people pumped. That's my, that'll, that'll be my role. Mm -hmm. So this is like just, it could be waterfalls and different things of goop and it could be falling down, or this could be barf, you know? And it could be like animal, or, you know, creatures made of barf kind of unhappy or happy, you know? Like, and, and they could be barfing new creatures. It could just be barf zone, you know what I mean? Was there a period in your life where you had uh, barf? Thanks. People love barf, dude. <laughs> oh, no, they don't. <laughs> At this point, everything is disposable and stuff, so. That's the thing about creative process is like, you want to go down every road fully to realize that road is wrong. You can't just go down a little bit and be like, oh, 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 oh. You gotta really test that water fully before you can realize that's a terrible road. And then you go down the next road. 
This is a list of locations from our backers on the forums, Tim asked. You know, some of the stuff we're just incorporating backer, uh, backer ideas, which was cool, you know, but they don't really know anything about the story, which is kind of cool at this phase, right, that they don't really have to, that maybe some of those things will wind up working in ways. I went through the first 10 pages so far. Oh my god, how many pages are there? I know, there's 38 or something like that. Um, we're still in girl world, sandcastle world. The new one. Sandcastle Sand World. That. Boy World. <laughs> a haunted lighthouse on the moon. What? what? I can't see the moon coming. Um, this dude says inside of a computer. This dude says an entire city made of blanket forts. That was something. <laughs> yeah. MS DOS World, where everything's made from words. Matrix. It's a text adventure. Matrix. It's called a text adventure. <laughs> it is a place where you play connect the dots to build the location. Fucking creative people, dude. Yeah. It's well, okay if we use that shit. I mean, dude, we're gonna get uh, sued. <laughs> Seriously, man. Fuck. I'm so excited to see these lists. I feel like, I feel like it's cheating, kind of. It's like, uh, they're stoked. Like, if somebody gets their idea made, like, that'd be awesome. And there's always sequels based on that one idea that someone said. Then they're gonna start being like, hmm, maybe I should have held on to that idea. <laughs> Hair trees. We mentioned that. I love all these guys and that whole that whole story. Like whatever. I don't even know what it is yet, but like yeah. that idea of going into this like grass covered thing that comes to life and and this behavior is really cool. Just like there's something lazy about it that, that I like. We just want to try to get as much stuff as we can. We're, with with the big. I just think it's a rad hunchback of forests yeah. right here. It's kind of like those uh, those places in New Mexico. Or We're not Arizona getting too into the mechanics of how the ship creates things or how the monster land looks or how the city looks, but just kind of overall things that might spark stuff for him right now. Mm -hmm. So we'll just do more of that tomorrow. Hello, everybody. <laughs>I just, I did a lot of drawing on my own, you know, self-taught. I would draw, when I was little, I would draw on paper and then um, if I didn't like something, I would crumple it up and throw it away. And I remember my father said to me, um, now if you, if you just slide your drawings into the garbage can and without crumpling it, without crumpling it up, you would fit more drawings in the um, garbage bin not knowing that he was going through it later um, and pulling out the ones he liked because um, after he passed away, um, I found a folder that was labeled uh, Peter and I found my old Star Wars drawings. Uh, if he didn't do that, I wouldn't have any uh, drawings because I don't, I don't really keep my, my stuff around. as you can see, uh, I tucked in the woods here and this is where I get my inspiration is uh, nature. Um, so as you know, uh, you're on San Juan Island and uh, this is my little studio away from my home. And this is where I create uh, drawings for games and films. I'm uh, in here uh, eight hours a day and uh, what's nice is on a beautiful day like today, I, I, uh, I like to draw outside when I can. And I'm having a creative block. That's the time to go out, you know, go on walks and hikes. And that's important to be creative too. I need to create that space to think. I love it. Can't go back. This fits and, and feels really, really good for my creative self and for my emotional self and everything else. It's really good. Graham actually was my last adventure game and it was the and it was done here on the island. It was my first job away from Lucas. This was my going away present uh, from Lucas. As you can see, 
never forget where you started, where you come from, and, and that's something really important to me. And that's why um, I have like some Star Wars stuff in here. It's important that I have a few of those things around because that's what inspired me. That's what got me started. That's why this piece here um, by Ralph McQuarrie is so important to me because he's the man that um, inspired me to do what I'm doing now. When I was 10, I didn't know that there was such thing as a, you know, a concept designer, someone that actually designed something for you to live in for those couple of hours, if it was a movie, or, or now hours playing video games. I mean, it's a, an, an opportunity to escape and live in that world. This is where I draw, mostly. Uh, I do it, everything standing up, and I still draw on paper, as you can see. Down here is uh, all the bad ideas right here. See, these are the workups. From this came this one, where it's, as you can see, is a total mess. And uh, I try to come up with uh, some funny ideas. And then from there becomes this one up here. And then eventually I use all those drawings um, to start my fire in the morning. <laughs> It's a good lesson on letting go. Let me show you guys something. These are my family photo albums of when Tim and Pete Sakel came to visit and uh, used to do work jams on the island with me at the uh, farmhouse. That's uh, me and my upstairs loft studio at a f in the farmhouse. And those are all the storyboards for Grim Fandango. And here's me drawing. I don't remember, but Tim swears that I was drawing so fast I was shooting the little ball tips out. <laughs> Is he going to kill me? I got to show you this. I'm not going to show you the second one because I know he'll kill me for sure. But I'm going to give you this one because he looks so good in it. Whoa. Tim chopping wood. Best man. <laughs> and I'm not going to show you the second one. That's, that's a before and then this one's after. <laughs> Grim is my favorite um, adventure game that I've ever worked on. But who knows, this could be the next favorite game. When I start a project, I start collecting um, my books. It's important to go and do your research. Do it the old fashioned way first. And I learn more by going to the library and reading up on it instead of just looking for a pretty picture off the internet. And so for us to create our own village, I think it's important that we uh, try to find that happy balance between what we're familiar with as fairy tale. The signature shape is like mushrooms for like Alice in Wonderland. And you balance it with something foreign, something that we're not familiar with. In Japanese architecture, you can kind of see there's mushrooms in it without even thinking about it. There are these great mushroom shapes that are happening. And so I thought I'd mix that up with um, Scandinavian like country homes, and that brings in some of that really cute stuff that's happening, you see, with the thatched roofing. Or you can kind of see that my wood-burning stove that I put in the background here looks like one of these lanterns. It has like the mushroom top. And so I'm just figuring that out right now, and then eventually you have to pitch this to um, Tim and Lee, and uh, hopefully sell them the ideas that I have. Um, yeah, I can't wait. And then what's nice though, is that I'm able to shut that door at the end of the day and walk across the lawn and go home. And I leave uh, this game in the studio and it doesn't follow me, follow me home because my life at home is important and uh, and actually you know we should get out of here and 
spend some time outside. So that's where some of the better ideas come from. Scott Campbell and I live here in New York City. We are in my apartment, which also is my studio. I'm an illustrator and I've worked at Double Fine, um, I think I was employee number six in 2011, 2001. And I was art director on Psychonauts and Brutal Legend. Production designer, Brutal Legend, my official title. When I was working at the studio, I, I like to go into his office and just kind of show him like uh, the, the paintings and drawings and stuff. And I would be able to gauge from his, his reaction whether or not it was good. That's what I miss living here in New York. One thing I know that Tim likes though, like he likes drawings when they're in cool poses. <laughs> Even if the designs aren't very good, he just likes poses. <laughs> so if there's a dude that I really like the design of, I'll put him in the coolest pose and hope that he digs it. It was one of my favorite thing poses, is putting, his, putting your feet up on something. Always sell Tim on this pose. <laughs> I haven't talked to Tim since the very beginning, so I don't know how it's evolved, you know? Just when Tim first pitched the game, the bagel and I, he came here to New York. We had some, uh, some sangria and some tacos, and we talked about it, and he gave us the pitch. And so after that, you know, bagel, bagel and I just kind of started just gathering our friends and just trying out, drawing the main two characters and some basic environment ideas. Pre-production is like when you get started and you start dream, dream the dreams. You know, it can be anything you want and stuff, and you're just kind of gathering inspiration. Gathering reference is like, it's like my favorite part. So I, I'm constantly taking stuff from the internet, like gathering like images and stuff. It's like if I, write it, if I see something cool, I'll just kind of take it and, and put it in a folder for later. Just like kind of the effects or the colors. I don't know what it would inspire, but it just makes me feel pretty good. I just think that's an odd scene. This is a nice soft picture of a lady. That makes me feel pretty good. I don't know what these are gonna inspire at all, you guys. I, I do all the drawings like kind of this, just on pieces of paper like this. I just draw on Xerox paper and stuff. And I like, I just scan them in and, and kind of make them look better later, pretty much. So it's easy for me to kind of like chill out in the morning in a cafe and do drawings like that. And then kind of like worry about, and you know, just like kind of any way that I kind of relax and kind of loosen up and stuff like that. And I find that if I'm not near a computer, I'm most relaxed. This is my little drawing zone. See, I, I print out a lot of my, a lot of my reference and kind of mood boards. So I have this up and I'm constantly kind of changing it out, you know, update it and with new things, make me feel different ways, so. So here's some paintings. So, so I painted these girls from, these are from the game. And so I just print out, print them out, um, and then just kind of trace them onto the paper and then start start watercoloring like that. This could be the girl, you guys. This could be the, this could be the, the drawing. So let's see what happens together, shall we? I'm gonna give her this little dress here. Oh, I'm not exactly sure what that's made of. Noodle arms, I don't really like noodle arms. Okay, there she is. That's one version. Maybe she has a little buddy, her, her magical buddy. We'll see, there you go. This is a concept art. <laughs> That's, a, that's how it works. That's how this, how magic works. Oh, here's a painting the bagel did of Obama <laughs> from a long time ago. Bagel and I are really tight bros. I moved here um, about four years ago and he moved here like a month after. He stayed with our other friend and then he would just work out of my house because we were still working for Double Fine out of my house. And then he just was always over here so he just found a place over here. But yeah, he's, he's super close. I mean, he just walk there right now even. And then cut to us over there. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's his window up there. Hey, go. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, buddy. It's a little tight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was going to try to clean all this stuff up. <laughs> but I didn't. It's a game, bro. This is my bedroom here. <laughs> and my studio where I paint <coughs> and where I sleep. It's my bed. 
This is my bathroom, it's pretty amazing. Um, it's clean. And this is my kitchen. This is my view, the projects. Uh, this is like this butcher paper that I had that I imagined I was gonna like draw all over, but that's about as far as I gotten. But if I ever wanna draw on the wall, I can do it. In painting, I do it. I usually just stick a canvas on the wall. You can see like all these paint marks like underneath that map. <laughs> I just like tack up a canvas on the wall and start painting on it usually. Yeah, no easel. So I'm just in the sketching phase kind of now and I do that all right here on the computer. So I have like one show a year. That's kind of like my sketch. I just work, do work stuff and then have like a solo show. That's the, how it's been going the last like three years. So I just have like one big show to worry about a year. And some stuff I had in the show last year. 18 dads, it's a bunch of dads. <laughs> this is just random piece of paper. This is like how I organize myself, I guess. These are just studies, like color studies, like N.C. Wyeth and uh, this illustrator that I like. Just weird doodles. First kind of color sketch of that thing. Yeah. Tim hadn't even really talked about the idea that he had yet. I would just kind of throw things at him every week, and sometimes he would say that he liked little things, or he'd just grab onto something and then I would take it, or you know, just kind of push things and, or try other things out. And so um, I worked out this kind of story about this weird lumberjack and a bear. Like he washes up on this mysterious island. It's like a magical island in some huge lake in the Pacific Northwest. This is kind of where the prototype started. Yeah, I had an idea that this like caveman got unfrozen with this dinosaur and they ended up like in the, what was it like Virginia? Mountains of Virginia and stuff. And it was, it was gonna be all like uh, bluegrass soundtrack. <laughs> fish out of water style, and then they would like all play music together or something. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Now, this is where that lumberjack dude is right now. He's gonna be a puppet, so we're like separating all of his uh, limbs. I gotta cut them all up. You know, break them up into kind of joints, but really simple puppet style, so you know, at the knees, at the elbows. And puppetize them for Ray to start animating this week. You know, in between these rotating poses, he can you know, supposedly make him look like he's going back, forward. So I gotta like paint what's gonna be behind the arms. I'm just gonna move it around so you gotta see what's behind here. Uh, this game is gonna be so totally different and new, so who knows, you know? It's gonna be exciting when we start getting into like uh, the, the real deal. I'm looking forward to that, it's gonna be awesome. I've always loved Bagel's paintings. He's, um, when he does his fine art shows and galleries, he does these crazy um, works that are come kind of somewhat surreal, you know, playing with scale and playing with a mix of cartoony and, and hype, like realism. You can do realistic stuff really well and mm -hmm. mix it with cartoony stuff and otherworldly type landscapes. And I think I would do a whole game that looked like those landscapes and with those strange characters. Check it out. It takes a lot to actually be the sponsor for some way. Oh, maybe. It's so cool on the iPad. Not oh, awesome? Did you see that? Just, is it like a touch and then he walks towards uh, your finger? Just, just touch. Down. Yeah, but, but you have, have to, to be in the foreground. Oh, yeah. okay. Like we came on the back of the layers. Yeah. Not right now. Not, not this version. But, but you can walk around. That's insane. We're gonna add all this developer. It makes me so happy because it's on an iPad. Yeah. And it looks pretty. In the end, all the art will go through Nathan as he paints the final stuff. So it's all gonna look like his style. So it'll all be unified. And it'll be interesting to see his take on the other artists' um, ideas and drawings. This will be more than any game we've done before, like uh, in the end, you know, a game where Bagel really gets to shine. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, in theory, he should be darker, like, you know, I think he's too light right now. Like, he should blend, the colors, I think, should blend more with the environment. But um, that's, that, it's just not in yet. It's, um, Lee's gonna do some effects and after effects, I think, that, that lights the character's texture. So he would be a lot more blue and dark in this one. Nice. Killer. I feel, I feel pretty awesome about it. I think <laughs> I feel great about everything. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's, I'm like interested to see how it's gonna go. You know, like I hope those guys don't hate my paintings of their paintings. You know, it's, it's awesome because um, there's just gonna be a sweet painting world. Like. That's, that, that gets me pumped that people are gonna be able to like explore my paintings. Yeah.
That's hilarious. That's amazing, Mookie. That's super good. So, so I'm actually scaling the arms a little bit so that so it, it feels like, like they go, yeah, they get a little bit of perspective in the feet. Yeah, that will totally, uh, totally work. Just to fake it. Yeah, just it's like weird. A it's a hybrid model. process because it's like you're doing a 2D yeah. painting, but then mm -hmm. we do have to get it on a 3D geometry, so it has some of the cleanup work as if it were a real 3D, like a full yeah. 3D model. Yeah. It depends on how like complicated we're going to get with all the parallaxing and... You know, I, I have never had to worry about memory issues and painting and <laughs> restrictions, you know, to, uh, technical restrictions or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's really like going to be a crazy learning process at the same time, you know. Yeah, putting it all together and, and making it into a working, functional, moving world is like, I've not, I haven't really done that before. So this is a whole, a whole new uh, world. If I were to say like, ah, here's, this, here's like him the most lit he's going to be. Uh, you know, here's him uh, darkest it's gonna Possibly. be and then like you're okay But I think that solves a, a different problem, right? We're talking about rim like I think the general color grading stuff I think look, yeah. look good. Uh, I think yeah. the rim lighting is a different thing That's not about lighting as much as it is like when there's an intense Light source around it's about just putting a little bit on there to like time into this I think I mean, if you read the comments in the form like everyone that found it very appealing it really helped Yeah, the, the time, yeah. Mm, okay. yeah, bagel is not um really, you know, technically likes to paint. He likes to paint on, you know, canvas and paper. And uh, um, and that's why it's really valuable to have someone like Lee Petty on the team who can bridge that gap. He's a fine artist himself. He can draw, he can paint, but he also knows how to use um, incredibly advanced, you know, techniques and 3D rendering and, and, you know, just making games that, you know, a lot of programmers, you know, he can match programmers sometimes with the knowledge of, um, He's got a lot of knowledge. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's great to have someone like Lee around who can bridge that gap. Yeah. That's why I was saying earlier, don't paint the character dark because yeah. you can never get lighter. So right. you want to generally paint them pretty light like this because then you get darker. Mm -hmm. um, you and can then, span both worlds. It's really essential because you can work with a great artist, but then if that doesn't really translate into the game, you can be, um, it's just a waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as much as you are. And I have faith that it'll work. I mean, Tim's, See, that's the thing is like Tim says, this is what I, I want to showcase Bagel's um, style. Perfect. I think that's a great idea. And so I trust him. Um, if that's what he wants, then, then there's something there. All right, Ray. Go back to your jam. All right. Thanks for jam out. Yeah, I got it. Very early on, I almost sometimes I have these stress nightmares about the game not existing yet. I used to have these nightmares about levels in Psychonauts that didn't exist yet. I, like I was floating in the undesigned world and couldn't grab onto anything. So it's like this is a stress of, of things that uh, you haven't really pulled together yet. And these are just, these are like little life preservers in the floating in the ocean. Like you grab onto them, like ah, ah, now I can breathe and like look around and see what else I can pull together to make a raft out of. You know, that's a metaphor. I like got like a lighthouse with a haunted house on top of it. Yeah, it's basically. <laughs> I can go home now. Do what? Peter Chan. Thank you. Peter Chan. Yeah, Peter Chan. Peter Chan. Oh, bagel's posting bagel. Oh, bagel. 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 Crazy imagination. Bradbury, early folklore, <laughs> man, Mars folklore. Ooh, I like Mars folklore. Mars folklore. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, bros, I'm out of here. Oh. Yeah, what? Oh, oh why? Yeah, Thanks for coming.
See you later, buddy. All right. Bye, bros. All right, buddies. Bye. Bye, Bye. Well, I came over to say goodbye. Yeah. Bye. Next time we come up to you. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Oh, jeez. I know. <laughs> <laughs>